OK, so this talk is part of our GCSE electricity series and specifically I'm going to be having a look at electrical power. Now, it's not really objective, so I don't really do the lesson objectives, but uh, my plan for this video is to look at the two equations which involve charge. Um, that's um, charge is equal to current times time and PD is equal to energy divided by charge. Uh, combine the two together to get the equation for electrical power. Also have a look at the equation for electrical energy. Obviously power and energy relate just by time, so uh, it's easy to convert from one to the other. Have a look at the alternative ways of expressing uh, electrical power. Do some examples as we go along. But most importantly, what do you need to be able to do? Well, uh, we're going to generate some new equations uh, here that uh, I don't think you've met elsewhere in the course and uh, equations that you're going to be expected to know and use. So you need to make sure that you have that uh, equations list available to you. Uh, you can add these new equations that we're going to talk about uh, onto your list and write down what they're for and what all the units are, etc. Uh, as we go along. So you might need to pause the, the um, video occasionally so you can make sure that you get any new equations written down with whatever details you need. Um, other than that, it's uh, I'm going to do some examples, but I don't really expect you to copy them all down. Um, we might end up doing some more examples where I write it on paper and I video that, and then you might want to write them down. Um, these ones, not so much. Okay, so there's the two equations that involve charge. Uh, basically, they're the definitions of current and potential difference. Current, um, which you remember we always write as I, is the rate of flow of charge. So it's charge in coulombs divided by time in seconds. Where potential difference, the voltage, is the amount of energy that uh, you'll get for an amount of charge flowing. And so um, this one is energy. And the energy, of course, is in joules. And this one, again, is charge in coulombs. Right, so let's start with the current one. Uh, and just start with a question. Now, questions uh, involving these two equations are actually quite rare. Um, and consequently, they can catch you out because you forget about these equations or you've not met many examples of uh, problems using these equations. And so you don't know how to approach them. Um, so just, just be a little bit careful. So what does the question say? A 20 ohm resistor has a PD of six volts. What charge through, flows through the resistor over a period of five minutes? Well, we want to know the total amount of charge and we've got a time. So clearly it's going to be this equation because there's the total amount of charge and there's the time. Um, so we want that one and we know that one. The trouble is, as things stand at the moment, we don't know current. So what we've got to do is we've got to look back at the question and say to ourselves, do we know anything else that will allow us to obtain current? And if we look at the question, we've got 20 ohms and six volts. So therefore, we can use Ohm's law. So Ohm's law, V equals IR, rearranged to give us current. Current is equal to V divided by R. Um, just slot my numbers in, 6 divided by 20, and hopefully I've done my maths right. 6 divided by 20 is 0.3 of an amp. So now I have everything that I need in order to answer the question, because I've now also got the current. So I've got the current, I know the time, and I want the charge. So I've write my main equation down again, rearrange it, um, I want charge, so I've got to move that T. At the moment, the T is dividing, so if I take it to the other side of the equal sign, it will multiply. So I get Q is equal to IT. And therefore, I get uh, my Q is equal to uh, my I, which is 0.3, times my time, which is 5. But of course, I'm not going to catch you out with that. That's five minutes. You know that in physics we can only do calculations in seconds. So I've got to convert my five minutes into seconds by multiplying by 60 as well. Gives me a final answer in 90. Have I got all the marks? No, you know that I'm missing the unit. So the unit is coulombs, C. So I've got to go back in and put a capital C in there to make sure that uh, I do indeed get all the marks. OK, um, potential difference is equal to um, the 
energy converted divided by the amount of charge that's flowed. Uh, let's have a look at the question involving that 120 ohm resistor has a uh, current of 0 0.05, 50 milliamps flowing through it. How much energy is converted by electrical working in the resistor over a period of three minutes? Um, so that all sounds familiar. Yeah, electrical working, what the hell does that mean? Um, well, it just means how much energy is being converted. That's all it means. Um, and so um, when energy is being converted, that's work. What's doing the work? Well, it's electricity. So therefore, it's energy being converted by work, electrical work. So how much energy is converted by electrical work in the resistor over a period of three minutes? Blah, 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 blah. Um, so not as complicated as it first sounds. Well, let's have a uh, let's have a look. Clearly, uh, as it's the amount of energy, um, we can uh, we know that uh, we want that one. Uh, do we know the PD? No, we don't know the PD. Do we know the charge? No, we don't know the charge. Oh dear. Um, so we've got a problem here. We've got to work both of those two things out. Do I have enough information available to me to work those two things out? Well, it looks like I probably do, because um, I've got 120 and ohms and I've got 0.05 of an amp. That means I can work out the voltage. There you go, ohms law. The voltage is six volts. And I, if I know the current and I know the time, I can work out the charge that's flowing, can't I? Using the equation that we used on the previous page. Um, so there you go, Q is equal to IT, which is 0.05 times three times 60 gives me nine coulombs. So I've got six volts and nine coulombs. Um, and we've been asked to work out E. So there's our equation. Uh, at the moment, we want E. Uh, at the moment, it's been divided by Q. Take the Q to the other side, and uh, the Q will then multiply. So we get E is equal to v, v times Q. And we've worked out that 6 and 9. So 6 and 9 together make 54. Um, you can spot that I haven't got all the marks there because I haven't put a unit on the other end of it. It's an energy, and therefore the unit must be joules. OK, electrical power. So same two equations again. Now, only one electrical power. Now, what is power? Power is the rate at which energy is being converted. Well, over here, I've got energy being converted. And over here, I've got divide by time, which gives me a rate. So if I could sort of put those two things together, I'd get electrical power, wouldn't I? And that's what we do. So what you do is you multiply the current by the voltage. And of course, current is Q over T and voltage is E over Q. So I'm going to multiply those two together. And I really hope that most of your maths is good enough to spot that that Q cancels. So I end up with current times voltage is energy divided by time. Current time and its voltage is energy divided by time, and of course, energy converted divided by time is power. So there you go. There's this, there's what we ended up with on the uh, previous page, just rewritten. And if I take that bit and that bit, then that gives me power is equal to current times voltage. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And that. Is an equation that you need that's a new equation so you need to uh, put that into your box so this is power and i hope everybody remembers that the unit of power is a watt capital w for james watt so power is equal to current times voltage electrical power the power being converted in an electrical system is given by the current multiplied by the voltage okay really important equation so you need to make sure that's in your equations list However, I can also write down energy because the only difference between energy and power is time. Um, in fact, if I we look at this bit of these two uh, of these equations here, all I've got to do is move that T over there and I get E equals IVT. So electrical energy is the electrical power, which is IV, multiplied by time. All right, so that's the second equation, electrical energy, or work, electrical work done. Make sure I can write that well enough on the, on the screen. Electrical work 
act on and because it's work or energy it's obviously in joules don't forget t time must be in seconds and they're going to try and fool you by giving it you in minutes or hours to see who, who they can make slip off okay quick look at uh, an example question um it's the example 120 ohm resistor current 0 0.5 of an amp we've met this one already um and we've already met the idea that we can work out that we've got six volts by using vehicles ir the trick is that now we can do everything else in just one equation when we did it before we had to do two more equations now we can just do it in one because we now know v we're given i in the question and we're given t in the question so we can jump straight to e because we now know the equation that allows us to jump straight to v and so once again we get 54 joules so it's just by using this new equation a slightly more efficient way of answering exactly the same question and that's something that comes up in electricity problems a lot which is that um, there's often more than one way to solve an electricity problem um, so there was nothing wrong with the method that we used earlier on um, this method just a bit more efficient because we know one more equation uh, so electricity circuit solving often find that there's more than one way um, to skin a cat as the uh, expression goes hopefully my cat wasn't listening when i said that right let's have a look at a uh, a new question a small uh, 15 kilo ohm heating element is connected to the mains what is its power rating well one of the things you've got to know here in this time that you have to know this for the exam is that mains electricity in britain is delivered at 230 volts so you please need to make sure you have that written down if you don't have that written down if you don't know that already make sure that's known um, because there'll be a problems turn up in the exam where they just expect you to know that and if you don't you can't get anywhere um, you may find if you have a look at some really old questions that it says 240 volts because it was 240 volts in britain in the past um, but uh, it's now standardized uh, across europe at 230 volts um, so 230 volts 240 was much nicer because 240 was a much easier number 230 usually gives ugly maths but never mind that's what we have to deal with so what is its power rating well power is iv uh, we know v it's 230 volts so we've got to find i and of course uh, we know that it's 15 kilo ohms and we know that it's 230 volts so we can find i by using ohm's law um, now this is, turns out to be a messy number because I say anything about 230 is going to be a messy number um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that number on my calculator uh, because that isn't my final answer that's only halfway that's the current I haven't asked for the current I've been asked for the power so I'll leave that number on my calculator and I'll use the answer button in the next part anyway I do now have the current I've got the current I've got the voltage therefore I can work out the power there we go and the power is equal to that number that's uh, still on my calculator from the previous one multiplied by 230 and it comes out out I've rounded that there's only two significant figures in the question numbers because we don't count that zero and so two significant figures in my answer 3.5 watts okay now electrical power Ohm's law it turns out we can combine the two for example we can take the electrical power equation and we can substitute for v we can replace v that's what that word means we can replace v using the equation for v over here now the equation for v over here says that v equals ir so what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this equation with v replaced by ir so now we've got power is equal to the i we already had the i we already had plus v which is given by that and that gives us p is equal to i squared r i times i is obviously i squared so that gives us p is equal to i squared r which is another way of writing the power equation for electricity when we've got a resistive device which at gcse we always have but that isn't the only way we can do it you've noticed i've left myself some space on the sheet 
Um, and you've noticed that the first time we substituted for V, well, of course, we can also substitute for I. So substitute for I from Ohm's law. Now, unfortunately, that version of Ohm's law isn't written in terms of I, so we've got to rearrange it. So I is equal to V divided by R. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this equation and we're going to replace I with V divided by R. There we go. So P is equal to I, but I is V over R times our original V that was already in the equation. And that gives us V times V all divided by R or V squared over R. So there you go. Two more versions. Two more. So they've got to be added to your equations list, but I'll write them out again on the next one. Now, so electrical power, which is the rate at which energy has been converted within an electrical device, is given by P equals IV or P equals I squared R. Now, this one we use for what's called resistive heating. So if we've got something getting hot because it's a current passing through it, then we work out the power of the heating via this equation. So this is always the equation we use for resistive heating. So if you were an electrical engineer, um, this would almost certainly be the equation you'd be using most of the time because um, you want to know what power you're losing, what power has been lost in delivering the electricity around the country, how much power is going into heating up the power lines that are doing the delivery. Um, and so the resistive heating is incredibly important to you. Or, you know, maybe you're designing an electrical fan heater and you've got to know how much, uh, you've got an idea how much power output it's going to have. And so uh, you've got to design your resistor to uh, generate that right amount of power. But anyway, this is going to be the equation you're going to use. Uh, but as we've said, it's not the only alternative. This is the uh, this is the other one. So you've got three versions now of electrical power. Um, and which one you use to answer a question with depends entirely on what you're given in the question. So if you are given current and voltage, that's what you're going to uh, that's what you're going to use to work out your power. But if you're given current and resistance, that's what you're going to use to work out your power. Or if you're given Voltage and resistance, that's what you're going to use to work out your power. So if you know all three, if you've got all three memorized, if you've got all three on your equations list and you've put some effort into memorizing them before we get to the GCSE, then answering power questions is nice and easy because you just pick the one of the three power equations that makes you makes answering the question for you the simplest. And I'll just give you an example of that. So seen this before and before when we did it before we had to work out current but of course we know mains is 230 volts and we know what the resistance is so we know v and we know r and we've now got a power equation that allows us to get there straight away there we go um, and therefore we can get to three and a half watts a whole lot faster um, using this method than using the um, IV one. We can do it with the IV one, but if you've bothered to learn this equation, you can do it a whole lot faster and any time saved you, you save yourself in an exam is a good thing. Um, I seem to have got that the wrong way around. There you go. I've given you the answer before I've given you the question. Sorry about that. Um, a power cable delivers 120 amps to a machine in a factory. The cable's resistance is 0.0045 ohms. Uh, at what rate is heat energy being produced in the cable? Well, of course, it's not really being produced in the cable. It's being converted in the cable from electrical energy. Um, so I didn't work that terribly well. Not doing very well on this slide, am I? Um, and this time, yeah, because it's a resistive heating, isn't it? We've got resistance and we've got heat. We're going to use P equals I squared R. Uh, we know I. We know R. So it's just a matter of doing the calculation. And so we get a power of 64.8 watts. The question says, what rate is heat energy being produced? Well, rate of energy is, of course, power. But just to just to show off, I've written it out properly. There's no way the examiner can dot me any marks then. The energy being converted into heat in the cable at a, is that being converted into heat in the cable at a rate of 65 joules every second. Because, of course, I've only got two significant figures in the question. So I've rounded to two significant figures in my final answer. OK, I think that's it for example. 
So, in summary, the two equations that involve charge in coulombs um, in uh, electricity, which are I equals Q over T and, e, and V equals E over Q, are not common, but they do turn up occasionally. So I'm afraid you do have to learn those equations just for the once every five years when they put a question involving them in. More importantly, they can be combined to give the equation for electrical power, P equals IV, or electrical work done, E equals IVT, because to get from power to energy, you just multiply by time. We can also use Ohm's law to uh, rewrite the power equation uh, in a couple of different ways. So we can say P equals I squared R, which is the equation for resistive heating. And we use that one when we've been given the current and the resistance and we haven't been given the voltage. Or we could also go uh, rewrite it this way. And we use that one when we've been given the PD and the resistance and we haven't been given the current. OK, quick fly through there. I dare say we'll do some more examples with you later on and we'll certainly do examples with you as we get close to the uh, GCSE exam. Um, but uh, hopefully you've got the all the new equations written down, those four, all written down with some notes as to what the terms in there mean, what the units for them all are, and when you would use them. Okay, see you next time.